I have already made a lot of videos about Chinese USB chargers, but this one is interesting for me because it's probably the most simple design I have ever seen and it also has a very interesting fuse. So let's test it first. It has an LED which the other ones don't have. And let's see what is the quiescent power. About 0.2 watts, the times 10 range. 0.29 watts. So this is probably the highest quiescent power I have seen. This is the fake apple. 0.11 watts. Real apple. 0.16 watts. Samsung. Virtually nothing. And the very dodgy cube. 0.07. So let's check the output voltage. It is 5.25 volts. And as it heats up, the voltage grows up to almost 5.5 volts. And this is a little bit too much for USB because the maximum officially is 5.25. And this one's output current is only 500 milliamps and the other ones have one amp. But the real current capability is always a different story anyway. So let's use a test load and load it with about half an amp. And the output voltage drops to about 4.3 or 4.4 volts. And this is starting to be a little bit too low for USB, but still somewhat okay. But now let's see what's inside. There is just one screw. And you open it up. There's the plug, two wires coming from it. There is a single half wave rectifier, capacitor, just a single switching transistor. There is no auxiliary transistor, just few resistors, diodes, a tiny capacitor, another capacitor. There's the transformer, secondary capacitor, a diode and LED with its resistor and the USB plug and that's it. It's very simple and I believe this is the most simple switching power supply design and it cannot be made even more simple. And there's the schematic of it. There's just a single diode capacitor. There's the single power transistor. It's startup resistor. This resistor is going to partly open the transistor and it will energize the primary and because of the feedback it will completely open and then it will stay open until this capacitor discharges and then it will start closing and because of the feedback it will close quickly and this cycle will repeat very quickly the secondary voltage is being rectified by this diode and filtered by this capacitor and this design has no optocoupler so how does it regulate the output voltage? There is an auxiliary winding and it's being rectified by this diode. And because it's in opposite direction than this one, the rectified voltage will be negative. And when the negative voltage reaches about minus 6 volts, this Zener diode will start to conduct and steal some current from the base of the transistor and it will help to discharge this capacitor faster, so the transistor will stay open for a shorter time. And this will limit the voltage at about 6 volts here and 5 volts here. So in fact, the auxiliary winding voltage is being regulated. But because the voltage of the secondary and auxiliary windings is about proportional, the output voltage is being somewhat regulated. That's not very accurate, but plus minus about 10 or 15 percent. So this is probably the simplest possible power supply. The other ones have auxiliary transistor, optocoupler, interference capacitor and so on. This one has none. It also has just a single diode rectifier and unfortunately 
it has no fuse, no fusible resistor, no inertia resistor, no interference filter and so on. And at the output there's one N4148 diode. And this diode is rated for 150 milliamps maximum. But the output current is 500 milliamps. That's just amazing. And on the board there's something like a fuse. It's definitely not a fuse according to European standards, but it's probably something I call a Chinese fuse. And the isolation distance is about 2.5 millimeters, and that's much better than the other supplies from China. So it looks a little bit safer. There is also no interference capacitor between the primary and secondary side, so it probably makes more interference, but there is nothing to short out. So the isolation mostly depends on this transformer. I have removed it from the board and let's open it up and see what's inside and how much it is isolated. One layer, two layers from the outside and this is probably the auxiliary winding and it looks good, it's in the middle so the turns cannot fall into the gap here so let's remove it one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen so the auxiliary winding has thirteen turns and the next winding is probably the secondary And there is one turn of isolation, two turns, just two layers of this sticky tape in between of the auxiliary winding and the secondary winding. So let's remove the secondary and it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine so the secondary has 12 turns of a thicker wire and we are getting to the primary and there's the isolation in between of the secondary and primary there is just just one layer just one layer of sticky tape in between of the primary and the secondary. That's definitely not good. That's scary. And there's the primary. And it has 2, 3, 4, 51, 52. And the entire primary is gone and it has 170 turns. And this is basically the only thing isolating you from mains. That's a little disturbing. So the conclusion is, there's a little better isolation on the board and there is no questionable capacitor connecting the primary and secondary. But the construction of the transformer is quite questionable and there is also no fuse. Just this. And no interference filter. I'm not sure, is it a good design or not? So, I would probably prefer using something safer than this one. This is Diode Gone Wild and see you in my next videos.